All right, it is Monday, September 24th, 9.30 a.m. We'll bring a special session of Sunbrook County Commissioner's Court to order. Let the record show Larry Hulsey, John Curtis, Danny Chambers, Kenneth Wood, and Don Kranz are all present. Item number one, discuss take action on the commitment between Sunbrook County and Symmetra LPGA Tour. Is there any... How do you want to do this, Brian? You want the Duff to uh, present? Do you want to present? I think Duff, he's, he's the man. Duff, would you want to step up to the microphone and push the little red button and give everybody an idea of what this is about? And is this to just be a commitment? If we were to enter into it, we had to do that on October 15th. Is that correct? The contract's of October 15th. What he needs is an answer as quick as possible so that, A, he can start work on the contract, B, get it on the schedule for next year um, where they're going. He's right now they're finishing their year going into next year. And what the Symmetra Tour is, um, so you have the LPGA Tour, the best women in the world that play um, this game and play for a living professionally. Um, this is the, the tour that they play to get into that and to like the top 10 or 15 um, money earners from this year will be exempt into the LPGA next year. So um, their phrase is future Hall of Famers. Um, LPGA, there has been, there's been some Hall of Famers that have played on it. It's been around for, uh, I believe, 60 years. Um, those of you who keep up with golf or PGA Tour golf uh, may know the Web.com Tour, which is the ver- this is the version of the PGA's Web.com, um, where the PGA has uh, their their superstars. There are Justin Thomases who played the web do- Web.com. There are other players that played web.com that moved through that onto the PGA ranks who have found success, obviously, there. The LPGA is it's structured the same way. Um, the Symmetra Tour is that that level of tour. So you have uh, the future, how they call it, future stars of tomorrow, or, or however their, their slogan is, that's who's playing on it. And that's who um, will be here They're from, from all over the world, from Korea, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Europe, Obviously, uh, here, America. Um, so it's a mixture of people, um, players that play. Most of, most of them are, are, you know, some out of college. Some have been on the LPGA, but have lost their card for whatever reason and have to play their way back on, um, to the LPGA. So these are, these are, are, um, some, some, I hate to say best in the world because those are LPGA, but let's just say second tier, um, best players in the world. And so they've never been to Texas. They don't have. A, they currently do not have a place to go in Texas. They're trying to expand their schedule. Um, and so uh, this gentleman with the Symmetra Tour reached out to Kelly Harris. Kelly put him in touch with me, and uh, we started talking about it. And um, you know, his his number one thing is is what he said. He said we just we want our girls to feel welcome. And uh, uh, so obviously, uh, Glen Rose is a perfect fit for that. And it would come in like on a Tuesday or Wednesday and last the what, Saturday or They play Saturday? Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, Tuesday's practice round, Wednesday's pro-am, Thursday's first round, uh, Friday's second round with a cut, and then Saturday, Sunday uh, is the final round. And sponsorships is the big deal for 150000 Sponsorships is the big deal. And, and um, obviously he wants us for, for – he wants this put together uh, so because he, he wants a March date um, in 2019. If this was 2020, we would have a lot of time to be able to send out and try to get uh, the purse sponsor. So it's the purse sponsor, the presenting sponsor, um, is is kind of why we're here, um, finding someone to put up the $150,000 for the purse um, is where we're looking. And uh, what the commitment back to the golf course um, is what we get paid. We get a guaranteed $50,000 back to the golf course, um, how he, he presented $25 or twenty five thousand for the green fees, twenty five thousand for food and beverage. Um, I don't know all the details in all of it yet. They've been running their tournament. It's hard. He's he's been busy, so just you know details of like exactly what goes on. I do know the pro am event um, is on Wednesday. I do know the sponsor, the premier sponsor gets has ten teams in the pro am event. I do know that it's run like a professional tour. Um, with uh, meet the pros uh, for the sponsorships, um, a lot of international and national media exposure um, and things like that that go go with that. It's just one course, correct? 
just one course. So so right now it would be the Lynx course. Um, the Lakes course, we'd still operate it just, just like we do every day. Um, green fee players, you know, out the number one tee, they play, come in. So no change there. I know we've all been making a lot of phone calls, reaching out to folks on the uh, sponsorship end of it. Sure. Have we had any... Any luck in any of that? Yet? I think I think our biggest I think the biggest deal I I think if if I think there's opportunity for smaller donated sponsors like many smaller donations versus finding someone just to outlay the hundred and fifty. Yes, sir. And you had mentioned and hopefully I'm not putting you on the spot, which I am, you had mentioned like you've got ten teams that three I have, we have teams, so so, so like let's say right, right. So so yeah, for for lack of a better word, we we own those teams, and we can we can sell those spots. Um, that uh, that's an opportunity to to make that back. We have, thank the Frank and Elaine and and the help. I think and and Brian bringing up the the grant. There's a grant in Texas for uh, for something just like this, where you're bringing and correct me if I'm wrong because you know more about it than I do. But for bringing events that are typically not in Texas, bringing them to Texas. And so there, there's grant money available as well. And I guess, say you do a commitment, then you sign a contract October 15th, then when is the drop dead date that you actually pay that 150000 to them? The day they show up, like Frank's Expo deal, or how does this work? Um, that, that's a great question, um, one that, that I can't answer 100%. Uh, that, I never did ask that question when talking to David. I would assume, I would assume it wouldn't be until the the – Closer to the event date. Because the more sponsors that we had, the more money we had to back that 150 up. Right. Of course, we know you're going to get 50 back immediately, but you still have 100 hundred thousand that we got to try to well, and make like, back somewhere. Yeah, uh, the, you know, the the end of the day, like we've discussed, uh, and, and to answer that other question, I, I I can guarantee that's probably going to be in the contract exactly when that is. So yeah. Once we see the contract, that uh, we'll we'll know that. You know, the chances of the county being on the the ticket for the full 150, I think, are very slim. Uh, you know, because immediately, like Duff says, there's 50,000 of revenue coming in from the event. You know, there's going to be a point in time if we have to reduce this this sponsorship for a lead title. Even if, even if we do minis, there's going to be a lead. There's going to be a prime sponsor. Even if that number gets down to as low as fifty thousand dollars, there's going to be somebody that's going to take that—a car dealership, uh, somebody. Uh, simply because it's just too much visibility uh, to not to not do it. Um, and then we also would have uh, the ability to use some of the hotel tax for an event procurement type of a situation in this. And that's all assuming nothing comes through uh, from the governor's office. Uh, on the grant. I mean, you know, I mean, there's just so many different avenues. Um, you know, could the county be responsible and, and have to, to pony up some? Sure. I'm not going to tell you that there's that this is risk-free, that we won't have to do any. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, I don't want anybody to think that, hey, it all went south and we got to stroke a $150,000 check because I, I really don't see that happening. Andy, educate me here. So we do this commitment, we vote to do the commitment, then the contract comes in, and we just need to vote, and we don't like the contract. Yeah, y'all, well, you wait on the contract. Yeah. We're under no we, obligation. If, we, if there's a potential financial obligation here, then we need to be very careful with, with so, that. But y'all can just uh, vote on a commitment to go forward, and then we'll see what happens on the contract. Right. Yeah. And we can look that over between now. I think our... A court dates what the ninth next month since eighth is a holiday and that gives us they're not looking for it to be signed on the fifteenth. That gives us time on the ninth to discuss it all the way through and say if we like it or we don't like it. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Isn't that all this guy's wanting right now is commitment? Yeah, I think all he all he's wanting to do is to move forward. Right? To say, okay, you know, we have this and then after that then it's he can put a contract together goes and bring into, it to us, and we'll decide what we want. Yeah, to do. and and then at that at that point in time, you know, y'all can, it, you know, it can be uh, we don't like it. There's 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 a lot more here that wasn't discussed, you know, on initially on um, the initial phone call, like uh, you know, whatever it may be. And no, I'm sorry, you know, we're not gonna, we can't do it this year. Um, Any questions? So I mean that that was that's 
that's the right. Uh, based on your experience with the grant, Texas state grants, um, I think there's a, a great chance for it. Um, looking through the grants, there's numerous golf tournaments that mm-hmm. get, get that funding. Okay. Yeah, and I, I mean, he stopped by one day and we talked for quite 30 minutes on it. Um, so I don't know a lot of the details either, but it sounds like it fits the qualifications. And Elaine and I said we'd be more than happy to go through the paperwork. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Well, anything else? If not, do we have a motion to uh, say we're committed to look at a contract, I guess? How would you word that motion, Andy? That's part of commitment to review um, the proposal that they're going to forward to us. Okay. I make a motion. I have a motion by Larry. I have a second by John. Do we have any further questions or discussion? Michelle, are you comfortable with how it's worded? Sure. Let's get it written down. Yes, All right. All in favor said motion. Five four zero against. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Do I need to push the red button again? Turn yeah, it off. If you don't mind, yeah, probably it may start screaming. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Discuss take action on contract between the County of Somerville and Taylor's Turn and Burn and Mary Simpson. We discussed this several different times. I think the only major change, and Andy and Brian tell me, is where it's going to be a flat fee instead of commission. It'll be $1,500 a month, $18,000 a year. Payments are to be received. If not delivered to uh, the fifth day of each calendar month, payments, shall, <coughs> payments received on the sixth or thereafter will be assessed a late fee of $50 plus $10 for each day of the payments of the What I was told. And that's pretty much the only changes versus the last contract, correct? Everything else is pretty much the same. Right, and, and as you said, it's just a flat fee, not a percentage of sales, not a... Correct. Right. $1,500 bucks straight out and we're gone. Pay one price. Same insurance as everything the same. <coughs> Any questions for anybody? Mm-hmm. Well, do we have a motion? What's the motion that uh, we enter into a lease agreement with Taylor's Turn and Burn Cafe and Mary Simpson at the Expo Center? I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion? Do I need to state the three year? Yeah, I was fixing to say that was the other change. It's a three year agreement with a renewable three year agreement. Uh, this uh, agreement will be for a period of three years. At the end of that three years, it can be renewed for an additional three years. And for a breach, either side, 30 days, we have the well. Anybody decides to vote to get out of it, either side can. All right. I have a motion by John. Who made my second? Is that you? No, I did. You still good with that yeah. second? All right. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. Five, four, zero against. Michelle, I'll have to get uh, Mary to come by the office to sign and override this, and then I'll get it to you. Would you ask her? When you see her, if you see her, stop by. And I'll leave it with Pat so she can sign it and get it notarized. Item number three. Discuss, take action with sheriff and constables fees for 2018-2019. Is that you, Michelle? Is that Alan, or who all is going to do this? Well, I think this year the email actually went to you, Judge. But uh, with that being said, if the clerk actually uh, submits uh, any fee changes for the constable and the sheriff online to the Texas Comptroller by October 1st, um, I reached out to Alan. I reached out to uh, both constables, and they agreed that they would not be changing fees this year for 2018 to 2019. Fiscal year, correct. So, do we need a motion to keep them the same with no correct. fee change? Correct. So moved. I have a motion by John. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion for Alan, Michelle, me? All in favor, said motion. It's five, four, zero against. Item number 
four, approve and adopt fiscal year 2019 budget. So I guess you've got some paperwork to hand out, Brian. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Look like you caught him by surprise there. <laughs> Were we able to get the list put together for the, pos the departments, the yes. positions, and the salaries? Yes, sir. I wasn't expecting a yes on that. Thank you. Yes, Treasurer's office got all that together for me. And is it attached separately or it's is it attached, attached separately? With you're, getting okay. a, you're going to get That'll a bunch of, bunch of paper here this morning. Um, that is the final budget that we have with all the changes. Here is the final equipment list that has been approved. And there. Here is the aforementioned staffing list. And here is the exact wording. So on the on the staffing list. And it will be approved and along with the budget. Now, if there's any changes in here, like like I know we're doing a lot of things at the road barn right now. The money's there to have it done, but uh, okay, the changes and the paperwork. If they decide to adopt this and the paperwork to do those changes, I guess we'll process through Paula's office to make this happen by Friday when we have this next meeting. It depends on when it's effective. From, from, I would say. from personnel and policy perspective, the dollars reflect something that's going to support approved what the dollars are going to be. If there's like that jump in, in set. From my perspective, the court set the policy that raises are one step at a time and that's going to be the same way. So if they do it, it needs to be presented to the court. All right. How many of those do we have that we need to bring back to the court to make that happen? Do we have a clue? We know we got one at the road barn. We know we're doing away with position. We know that the the one at the road barn is already in that number. Okay. Uh, as far as budgets. Right. Concerned, and then the staffing plan already takes into account any any uh, 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 calendar increases that they would have in their step during the the budget. Right. So the only time the court would have to intervene is any time there's something that's outside of that. Um, you're instead of somebody getting their normal anniversary step, you're wanting to take about two steps. Like what? Uh, so we're doing right. Uh, Right, uh, or you know something something bizarre, uh, allowing an elected official to change classification of a worker that was not budgeted for. You would have to bring that back. Uh, the elected official would need to bring it back to the court for uh, for approval because they just couldn't automatically say, "I'm going to change this person from um, you know whatever that position is one to that position two uh, because it wouldn't budget. It wasn't in the staffing plan." Uh, couldn't couldn't take their their employee count from eight to nine because only eight was budgeted in, in that staffing plan. So it, it pretty much locks down the staffing aspect of it. So if they decided to move along with what, and yeah, we hadn't been over this its entirety yet, then you're saying if it was effective October the 1st, if then that's when well, that would, they would need that to... That would depend on when Paula needed the... That's all the only comment I was making. If the change doesn't become effective until, say, December, you wouldn't need it until November, right? Correct. I have, that was the only comment I okay. was making. But, I, but I'm still saying it, the specifics of it need to be approved. Be approved. Yeah. Okay. On a and if we've got some that's coming October 1st, most of those we can have to the court probably Friday when we have the other deal. Is that correct? We can have them in and we can... Correct. So what, what, I'm, what I'm understanding is that the change from the utility tradesman 
whether there has to be a, uh, a change in their job description or the fact that we really aren't having utility tradesmen anymore. They're all operator ones uh, right. is what I kind of understood. And so, who's going from where to what and how they're going. You think Brady could get that? Just have it put yes, what's going where to when and get we that get, to follow? We'll get that today. All right. And then we'll get that to you and then we can have all the paperwork. I need to sign Friday when we have the other meeting. We'll present it to the court. Does that work? And then anything that you need to get anything, paperwork before Friday, get with Paula to discuss if there's anything else that needs to be done. Because I see the tax rate didn't change and I see that the main number didn't change. So whatever, and I'm not trying to talk to all y'all. It's just, am I right there? Sir? Up to this point. I locked it, I locked it down. Uh, and this should help lock it down even more. I have a question about that. All right. If, if the salary, the salary scales for the employees are submitted or treated just like the equipment list, then it's not per se part of the budget because we deviate from the equipment list throughout the year, correct? Only with commissioner's court approval. The, the equipment list becomes the Bible. It they, is published with the budget. It, it is part of the budget. I don't know if it's actually published with the budget. It is. It's the, it's the subsidiary schedule that makes up that line item number 570. And then the purchasing agent in my office receives this copy. And only when they call in for POs and it's out of that 570 money, it can only be spent on what is been approved on that list. And I'm not... I guess all I'm saying is all the budgets where I saw specific salaries were actually published. And this one will be. The budget as part of it. This one will be, yeah. It's, it's only presented separately here just so that we're not flipping through 50 different pages. It's, I've got some separate booklets. And I know I'm jumping around here, but like what they're talking about at the road bar, that's in here, moving people to... Yeah, getting rid of the positions, getting to the positions. They gave up four positions. Gave up four, and they moved everything consolidated, and they're going to hire one. I just didn't want that to get lost. Right. In all the right. discussion. And we'll present all that to Paula sometime, hopefully today or tomorrow. All right. Well, I'll shut up, and y'all take over. What about equipment list? When you talk about equipment list, well, just giving you the the updated one. The only thing that has changed from our earlier discussion on equipment list would be in the sheriff's office, and we have, uh, if you notice there, I've got a line item for fourteen hundred dollars called additional taser payment. Um, they took that out of their uniform budget to get the additional taser payment, so their uniform budget went down fourteen hundred, and their five seventy went up fourteen hundred. So it was a, a net sum zero. But I listed it on their 570 list, so we would know exactly where that's coming out of. We did the $1,820 payment out of this year's budget, and then this is going to be the $1,400 that's, that's subsequently due for next year. And Alan, this may not be the time to discuss it. How's it look on Friday for Zerker to go live? How is that looking? On 28? Good. All right. There will be in Saturday and March. Probably sometime this week we ought to get together and talk about net data, how that's all going to work with Pat and Karen and, you know, extracting data from you all. I know there's no place time to talk about, but that's something we've got to worry about by the end of this week. The, the, yes, other, the other changes I'll make. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not through with that one. Oh, yes, sir. Zerker, does that uh, do away with cop scene? No, sir. Cop scene in bankruptcy and file for bankruptcy? They've been bought out, purchased, and they're coming out of bankruptcy. Okay. And they, they sold their software to another company. Right. Okay. And I can see the logo, but I can't tell you the name. But yeah, it's been in court in Louisiana, and they're, they're in the process of coming out of bankruptcy. The last calling I saw, is that correct? Correct. Couldn't take the place of it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right. Um, the other changes that were made. Uh, if you will look down, at these are in the special revenue funds primarily at the end of your budget. Uh, and we, uh, through some subsequent discussions with those involved, we changed some things in the uh, library fund and the hotel tax fund. Uh, your hotel tax 
fund starts with 080. And you'll see that we have a budgeted expenditure of $76,000 this year uh, proposed, uh, which will, you know, we do have a, a balance going forward in that hotel tax money. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, we've got $15,000 set aside for revenue. Uh, there is a tourism show uh, that we are going to be participating or that we're proposing to participate in. Um, total costs involved with that, travel and uh, equipment, $14,000. Um, we have, uh, we have uh, been asked to cover the association dues for all of the uh, hotels and bed and breakfasts in the county completely, including those inside the city. Uh, this is this is one of these things that's going to be a, a, a an olive branch. Um, it's going to cost uh, a little bit less than seven thousand dollars, and this gives them uh, this buys their membership to the Texas Hotel Association. Yes. Who has historically purchased this? Nobody. Nobody. It's, it's been individual memberships if they chose to join, and. Uh, so this was something that was presented and it's being presented for your consideration here that it would be that we would pay for it out of the county. This this is kind of taking the place of giving money directly to the CBB. Uh, this is buying this membership, which would include the CBB's membership, but it also would give all of our bed and breakfasts a direct benefit from their hotel tax remittances because they would get this membership no longer having to pay for it on themselves. We're getting a group rate because it's covering everybody. And it gives them access to um, uh, lawyers to, to speak. They can call in and talk to a lawyer. In uh, seminars where they come down and educate all of us. Talk to a lawyer about what? Any issue they would have. Employment issue, uh, loss, uh, Anything dealing with their operation, bed and breakfast for a hotel. Brian and I talked one one evening for about thirty minutes before we realized that we were supposed to be a member. Oh well. And then um, the the we uh, we got the event procurement line of twenty thousand dollars, and also have what's called joint marketing of twenty thousand. Let me ask you something: Is the city pitching in anything on this seven thousand? Oh no, sir! This is all this is all our hotel tax money. Well, why not? They well, get I mean, the percentage of it. Well, I mean, this was this was this was kind of answering the question as to us just simply writing a check to the CBD. Here was something we could provide to show that we're working together. Every hotel, motel, bed and breakfast. Well, that's what I'm getting at. It, RV part. You're not talking about just the ones out in the county. You're talking about all of them. Right. I, I mean, if we, so, if we covered just the ones in the county, I would not expect that price to go down that dramatically. Um, it, you know, it, it's based upon size and number of members. Uh, you know, it'd probably be about $5,000 if we just did the county. We figured it was just something we could do to answer the question, why aren't we working with the, the CBB more and funding it more? Well, here's something we could do. We are working with them. They're getting a bigger percentage than we are. I, I understand. Has anybody reached out to see if they wanted to not pay on this a portion issue. of this? No, not on this one. Well, the, the, reached out to the city? Yes. Oh, uh, no, sir. Uh, the CBD is all in favor of it. Yeah. I'm sure they are. But no, I, on this one, I haven't reached out to the city on this one. <laughs> And then uh, we got twenty thousand in joint marketing, which is our partnership with Fossil Round. That was my question. Yeah, what was that? To do joint joint marketing events, Mayfest, uh, uh, Ironman, those type of big events. Can we use any of this for the uh, golf tournament? Yes, sir. The uh, certainly the uh, event procurement twenty thousand. And then if we need to do more, this simply means we have to come back in and revise this budget. If it looks like we have an issue. Back to the seven thousand. Yes, sir. Can we take we can take this out of the hotel tax? 
Yes, sir. That, all of this that's why you got it here. Okay. Yes, yeah. sir. It's yeah. all coming out of the hotel tax. And that's why we we spent the time with that lawyer out of Austin. We talked, I don't know, we might talk to him for about an hour about this and many other items about what we can, you know, can't right. do with hot tax. And that's where this all actually came from. Pretty much this layout of how we're spending it came from his okay. advice. Hey, there was, a, there was a couple items he sort of freaked out on before that we had tried to do, but, yeah, it worked out all right. So uh, we are really was going to have to spend some money on them anyway, and this is a way to do it. That's right. This, this is not coming out okay. of the county coffers. Okay. This is out of the hotel tax money. What well, we actually received from all the hotel taxes. So what we, want, what we want to do is show that we're giving I understand that. some of their money back to them. Since we can't spend it on hardly anything, well, and, and you know, this is a way to. You know, we're going to be able to spend it on the uh, on the golf tournament. You know, if we need some money there, the, the one that y'all just talked. Well, about it's here. going to be. I, I understand you say we can, but actually, how? Well, it, it's called event procurement expenses. Now, here's the thing. Our, our expense for the tournament is probably about 50000 at the golf course, so that would be our upper limit that we could take from the hotel tax right. would be a $50,000 rate. Okay? But that's what I'm saying. Towards that hundred and fifty, there's fifty right there. Okay. If I sell the, the prime sponsorship for fifty, I mean, I've, I've got different things that we can pull from. And it would be great if some of these people, if we did get the tournament, and some of these ladies stayed at the bed and breakfasts around the outside the city, which is quite possible. Well, I think it's going to be quite possible because during the time of this tournament, we're also going to be having the outage. So I think you're going to have a lot of. Uh, I think anybody that's got a bed is going to have a, have a guest in it. Okay. Everybody should be full March, April, and May. Everybody. And I think it'll look really good, especially the bed and breakfasts if they're they're golfers. Okay, the question I've got. You got total revenue of forty two thousand one hundred and you got total expenses of seventy six thousand. Yes, sir. Where is the rest of that money coming from? Because remember we've got this balance in the hotel. Yeah, that's, so yeah. we're actually gonna be spending that down. Okay. The balance with them ring forward. What we had eighty one thousand in there? Uh, so, give me a, give me that, a that's fine. That was rough. Eighty eighty one eighty four. We've got it. That was the answer I wanted to hear. Yes, sir. And as we spend that down over the next few years, 82, 291, 53. Then the question was to go away, why do we keep accumulating that money? Right. It'll be going down if we spend it on all, everything this year. Then the, uh, if you'll look right below there, library expenses, uh, and that's fund number 081. Uh, same situation, Commissioner. We're, we're actually uh, proposing to spend more than we collect for next year. Again, because that fund has been building up. Uh, it's about 32000 I think, right now, somewhere in there, ballpark. Verify that. Yeah, I didn't mean to put you right back. But well, yeah. you know, I like to go off, so it's fine. I think it's 30, 33429 That's what we have in library phone right now. And, of course, uh, the, the history of that was with, you know, I had to go talk to my predecessor, which would take a while. Um, do but uh, I understand there was a memorial gift that was given at one point uh, for Becky Ice's mother to build a sign. But the, the majority, of it, I don't think that was more than about five or $10,000, and that was some time back. The other things that have, have gone into there have been um, basically the late fees, the fines. And, you know, it's been kind of one of these things. It's 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 always been this way, so it wasn't anything I was tackling to change. The county buys the books, but the late, and the county pays for all the payroll and buy it and owns the building, yet all of the fines that are charged on those assets go into this fund. I don't understand it, but anyway. With that being said, um, we approached uh, uh, Peggy about two things. Number one, uh, and that's what's added here, this $1,500 subscription fee. 
for this uh, requested uh, Ancestry.com uh, subscription to be on the, the uh, library computers so that any resident can go down there and utilize this. This was kind of a joint request from uh, the genealogy. Yeah. No, nothing joint, I guess. It was from the genealogy, but Peggy is willing to, to have that come out of the library funds. I think we need to clarify the library fund and who controls library fund. Um, that is county money, not library money. It, it's not uh, donated money. Right. It's fine. Right. But, you but, know, but, but yes, sir. And, and, and it really, really kind of is. I know that there was at one time a library board, but I. I for discussion, I don't think it's really active at this point. I talked to Peggy, asked her how it's been spent in the past. She said normally they come to her, talk to her. She spends it on speakers and the speakers and something else. There's some other presentation they do in the summer. There's speakers and there's two things that, that there's they do. Some normally. reading program that they do. Now, who goes and talk to her? I don't have a clue. But I did this time. And then I had Brian and her and I sit down together before we tried to spend any money out of there. But far as you know, it's not donated money. It's, it's, it's fine. With the, right, with the exception of that one gift, uh, that's that's all. And uh, I just suggest that we put some clarification to that and define it better. On that. I'm not saying we can't use it or shouldn't use it for those those purposes, but. Right. It's exactly. certainly under the county treasurer's control. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's and I guess it's already been, always been used for the library, correct? Whenever whenever it is used, it comes out of that fund and is used for the library. And it's just been, since I've been here, it's just been for those summer programs. Speakers and readers. and mm-hmm. That's fine. I'm not, yeah. I just think we need an accountability of it. No, I, I agree. Uh, you, know, it, uh, I, I, you know, it's not... We've never paid like any travel expenses or anything. We don't think. So, uh, and, and like I said, I, I, I don't know what happened to this "quote unquote" desire to have a sign built. I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I leave that where it is. So, two things uh, uh, new for this year is that we put the fifteen hundred dollars for this uh, uh, ancestry.com expense, and then also you'll see a six thousand dollar. IT expense. This is uh, the library is the one place that is still not part of our county network, and uh, so we are looking at uh, installing an antenna behind the library that will connect up with us. It's an antenna that we already own. Uh, it's actually sitting behind the former law enforcement center on 67, and so all we have to do is just simply. Four pads, get set up, erect the tower, and then tie it back Simple. into our system. Simple. Yeah, yeah. And that money would come out of that. Right there. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. And the biggest expense is like a three to four thousand dollar server, which we would have its own server, and then we would uh, either upgrade or replace those six computers they have. Which we talked about this for like four years on their computers and their network and their. We talked about it a lot, but. This time, we can actually spend the money out of their library fund to make it happen. Correct. And Peggy totally understands everything that we've talked about spending it on. I hadn't heard any argument. No. Uh, and we'll, you know, setting up that tower, we'll use as much county resources, manpower as possible, but we will probably have to get a professional tower person who's done the work out there at uh, Chalk Mountain to certify that we don't have any issues there. Once it's bolted down the wreck, it's going to be And I don't know what we stand on that. They were going to be some pricing on pouring the pad. We were going to pour the pad and then somebody, to, I guess I need to find out where the pricing is at. Because last I'm, I heard... I'm just grateful we've got the, the antenna structure. I was even unaware that that was sitting back there. Right. Our IT person told us in sections. So... And and with that, gentlemen, that's that's uh, that's all of the changes that have been uh, migrated uh, since our last workshop. I asked Brian to run some numbers for me. Um, we we had an identified approximately, I say approximately fifty thousand dollars. Uh, 
down at the expo uh, fire protection system doors and the vacuum system and I asked him to project the numbers based on the, the proposed tax rate and for $50,000 to the expo we would still be under the published um, tax rate of point four nine one five nine zero. It would be with the fifty thousand added. It would be point four nine one four four nine, which is point zero 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 one four four under. Yeah. Okay. And this would just take an excellent consideration only. No golf course, nothing else, just the expo. Golf course. Well, changing tax rate. You know why I'm having trouble with this. Because we're fighting every week to balance this 209000 for the expo that we're trying to get under control by the end of September. So coming up with a tax rate for 50000 more is a, a burr for me. I'm not saying for the court. I don't know. I'm just saying for me. And you probably understand why. Yeah. What we just went through here about six weeks ago, trying to keep them alive until October 1st. So am I missing something? Or am I not seeing something? Or I don't think anybody sitting at this in this court would have knowingly and willingly authorized an expenditure greater than what was in that budget. Okay? Right. The fact well, we that did. it the fact that we were not advised, and I strongly say we were not advised of that overage does not set well with me. Never has. Totally understand. Totally. But it's a fact. And we're still trying to, to make it work, which we will. We will make it work by September thirtieth. Right. It will everybody will be paid. But as we've discussed before Throwing more money at a bad idea does not make it a good idea, right? It was a lost leader from the get-go. Which I, it was, uh, yeah, that runs me the wrong way from the beginning. We did our part in trying to procure a sale of we that did. facility. We did it very hard. Um, so I'm just I'm throwing it out there. If the court does not think it's wise to do it, then... And I'm speaking it. strictly for myself. I'm not speaking for anybody else up here. Brian, or, uh, what was it, six weeks ago, a couple months ago, when you hit us with the... How's he looking now? Well, you know, we had our meeting uh, to show where he was through the end of August. Um... I can pull up as of this morning. He. Uh, the expo. The, yeah, yeah, let's refer to the expo. It's not he. We own the thing. All right, I, I meant he as expo. I guess what we're be at, John, when we raise the tax rate, for any of these other groups sitting out here, such as a fire engine or a brush truck. You know, that that's what I'm saying. Would we do that but for anybody else if it weren't the expo? Would we even entertain this idea if it weren't the expo? Just me. No. Would we? 
And I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, that, that anything that happened this past weekend, those receipts have not been turned in yet and, and not reflected in these numbers. But uh, right now, through the end of September, the expo has turned into the treasurer forty-eight thousand seventy-eight dollars and sixty-four cents. For no. do we still owe for the? Yes, we, they have not. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't so we've received that. insurance money, but they, they still haven't asked for that yet for that last payment for the bird error. So that's why we have not moved any more money over there to them at this point in time. It's still out there. Peter sure. Paul, yeah. It's still out there. 48000 48, has been deposited with the treasurer's office, and, and Frank's gone, so I don't know how much he anticipated from this. Bird error? It was. That's a tent. Uh, yeah, tent. I know. That has been. We're well, spending that money. We're spending that money. Until we can recoup that money and get like Robert Peter to pay Paul, okay. until we okay. slide it back in there. I got you. I got you. It's not being charged against the expo. It's not at all. Um, for the entire month of September of last year, uh, fifty-seven thousand nine hundred six eighty-three. So he's he's on track. You know, depending on what this last weekend had, uh, he's on track to to have a greater uh, a greater month. And what he explained to us in our meeting in August, for August, was that there was a timing difference. Uh, that last event in August, those funds, so uh, he was he was uh, worried about the August numbers being low, but it was because they turned in the last event in August in, in September. And so that's why the September numbers look good. It, it I would draw good. my concern and motion. I had made a motion. I'm not even going to bring it up. So we're looking a little better than we thought it, we were. It's, it's holding, yes, sir. It's holding its own okay. year to date right now. We're at uh, we're at six hundred and ten thousand nine twenty four uh, last year. Six forty one uh, three thirty one. You know, I, I don't anticipate him having a better year. I, I don't think last weekend will generate you know thirty thousand uh, dollars. But I would I would expect it to turn in probably about twenty based upon what I saw in the parking lot. I mean, he looked like he had a or the expo looked like he uh, right. had a full parking lot uh, there. So it would get us closer to help paying it off and coming square before we, September 30th. Right. Even though this court authorized a almost like a line of credit authorization, I only moved, and the treasurer and I only moved what was necessary. Um, so, and we, we monitor that. Any more questions or comments on that order? All right, Brian, before we move forward at all with even thinking about adopting the budget, the tax rate remained the same at 0.489232. Is that right? And I'm reading off the other one. That yes, sir. Uh, if you look here uh, at the front page, at the very top, right. it, you'll have the tax rate, which is the 489232. Okay. And I did prepare, and, you know, once this is finalized, I did prepare the, the breakdown that y'all are used to seeing, uh, how that kind of coordinates out of the, you know, on a, on a $150,000 taxable value uh, county taxpayer. Law enforcement is the is the winner uh, at two hundred and twenty dollars and ninety six cents of that total tax bill of seven hundred thirty three dollars and eighty five cents, and then you can see the different categories down there below there. And in the main budget, the main the same I believe eleven million thirty three thousand. Is that correct? Hang on, I know I'm putting on the spot, jumping around thirteen. There you go, 13 million. 13027 I wish it was 16. 15, uh -huh. Can you email me that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Once, once if you'll send it to me, I can make cover copies of it. We'll need it after this yeah. is voted on. For yeah, sure. I was just waiting for the final numbers so that. 13027 
on page 26, I guess it is. Yeah, 26. Yeah. 13,009,063 books. All right, it's Kevin here, Andy and Brian. On this list that we're adopting with the budget of the departments, the employees, and the pay. If any change happens to this during the year, outside of this regular merit raises, if a position is added or a position is lost, then we come back to the court and change this list. How do we do that? Not necessarily if a position is lost. Okay. Uh, I mean, if someone if someone resigns. Okay. And the 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 position is is refilled either internally right. or, or whatever, right. and there's no change to the. Or, or the dollar amount. say this: the dollar amount doesn't exceed what has been okay. put in there. There's no, there's no issue here. The only time the court would need to be involved, and I, I'm certainly not speaking for the county attorney here, but the only the only time I foresee the court being involved is if a position is added, uh, a, a brand new position in addition to what has already been budgeted, or a, 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 a raise is given that was not budgeted. Uh, the court would need to. To authorize that raise. Okay. So this list pretty much locks everybody down into positions that they're in right now at this time. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm, there's no name associated with it; just positions that go with the department. It's positions, and then we've we've given right. you the grade and the step uh, that's associated with that grade. And then if you look over at the far left, you have the general ledger line number in your budget that that. That, but okay. that uh, expenditure corresponds to. Good deal. All right. So we're not giving out any personal identifiable information. Right. No. No. Like no. That. And I, I never wanted that. I just need the department and the employee a number. Correct. Positions. Well, guys, any questions? Concerns? Would this be the if we vote for this? This the final. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this this gets us through 2018-2019 uh, if it's approved. We wouldn't have to meet anymore. Whenever, whenever you want a motion. Well, it's very precise here. Well, that's Whoever the tax rate, Judge. This is only tax rate. Two, right. of, them, two of them, I'm going to try to have below increase adoption. Uh, so whoever does this one. So. The first is a, is a motion to uh, approve the budget, and it has to be a record vote. So we have to uh, go down the list. So do I have a motion to approve and adopt a budget for FY 2019? Yes. I have a motion by Larry. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. <clears throat> Any further questions or discussions at all for anybody? Hey, Judge, I have, I have a question, and I know we've already made a motion and second, but, um, and I just want, and this may not affect anything, but the other day, uh, you and, and I and, and, uh, and Brian discussed my records management line item. Um, it not uh, meeting the amount needed for what we had gotten an invoice for. Do you recall that? It was like twenty three thousand is what yep, I had collected. I remember the number twenty three. The money budgeted was like nineteen. Yes. So it's still at nineteen. I just want to let yeah, you know that we'll, we'll be making that adjustment through okay. contingency on that. Contingency. Okay. So, no problem. Any further? Just, nope. That's it. Questions? I just wanted to make that known. Concerns, comments. All right, I have a motion by Larry, second by Kenneth. Larry, how do you vote? Yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Danny votes yes. Kenneth, how do you vote? Yes. Don, how do you vote? I vote yes. All right. All in favor of adopting the budget for 2018-2019. Now, this is where whoever makes this motion will need to get the wording correctly. And Brian, Andy, anybody jumps in here. Looks like it'll be a pretty good little bit amount to read in. The first two paragraphs looks like, right? Simple County Commissioner finds tax rate year 2018 and after levy for current expenses. Simple County is done improvement. Whereas proper notice required hearing the following motion was offered by Commissioner so and so. Second, the guy, Commissioner, I move the property tax be levied and increased by adopting tax rate of, and read that into the. Yes, sir. That, what's in bolded and, and, uh, and quotation marks. I, Needs to be the exact wording in Perk Tax Code, Chapter 26. So the part that's actually uh, in bold print, whoever wants to make this motion, who wants to take this motion on themselves? I see nobody wants to take this motion on themselves. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm leaving. Right there. 
Sorry. Oh my God. I'm for the budget, but not the tax rate. There you go. You did good. So you're, now we got to we got to get the money to spend it. Ready? Ready. I move that the property taxes be levied and increased by adopting the tax rate of zero point four eight nine two three two per one hundred dollars valuation for the twenty eighteen tax year. I have a motion. Should that be 2018, 2019? No, it's 2018, 2018 tax year. Oh, that's correct, because it comes out in January. That's right. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? You have a second. I have a second from Kenneth. Do we have any further questions or discussion? You'll see Section 1 says that uh, that 489232 is simply for the general fund. Section 2 speaks about the uh, interest in thinking being an amount of zero. And uh, you'll see that in Section 4 talks about on the, the tax code uses $100,000, even though my example always uses 150. But the tax code says on $100,000 it's going to increase the uh, taxpayer $27.64 a year. All right, I have a motion. By John and a second by Kenneth. Larry, how do you vote? Yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Danny, I vote yes. Kenneth, how do you vote? Yes. Don, how do you vote? I vote yes. All right, unanimous vote, 5 0. And if you'll sign both copies of that and pass it back, we will. You want to put that with the Michelle's paperwork? One goes to Michelle. One comes to me that i got to uh, send down to the appraisal district. Oh, that's right. He was asking me who was going to put this to bed. <laughs> he worried about her. He is, yeah. He's one of the last ones this year. All right. Item number six, approved budget transfers. None we'll until Friday. Meeting. We'll be meeting on Friday. Do we need to pay any county bills? All right, Kenneth. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. We have a motion by Kenneth. Judge, you have a second. We have a second by Don. All in favor said motion. It's five four, zero against. Thank you all very much for suffering to another one. Don and Don don't have to suffer anymore. Seems like it's been a pretty good meeting. Yeah, it's been a it has. I don't know why, but it has. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.